In February, Germany plug-in EV share increased to 25%. With Tesla's Gigafactory opening any day now, that number looks set to rise significantly. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. Great to have you here on the channel. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to all the new subscribers. If you don't know, we've made more than a thousand videos over the last seven or eight months, so make sure you check those out on the channel. Thanks for subscribing. Great to see you. Germany, Europe's largest auto market and the world's second largest vehicle market when it comes to electric vehicles, second behind only China, saw plug-in electric vehicles take 25% of the market share in February. That's a 5% increase from the same month last year. However, fully electric vehicles increased by 50% year on year while plug-in hybrids fell marginally. So it's the same trend we're seeing worldwide. People are moving away from plug-in hybrids towards electric vehicles. Overall auto market volume at just over 200,000 vehicles was up 3% versus the same month last year, but still down from pre-COVID-19 norms. So what this means, petrol vehicles or gas-powered vehicles took 24% of the market, Diesel took about 20%, hybrids took 19%, purely electric vehicles took 15%, and plug-in hybrids took just over 10%. So of that 25% of the market, which were electric, fully electric vehicles took 14.1%, full battery electrics, and 10.8% were plug-in hybrids, or FEVs. Now, comparing February 2021's results of 9.4%, and 11.3% respectively. Clean Technica says that we can see that BEVs have gained 50% relative share, whilst plug-in hybrids have marginally lost share. In fact, plug-in hybrids have been hovering mostly in the 10 to 13% range for much of the past 18 months, and may not grow at all from here on in, depending on what happens with electric vehicle supply. But considering we're about to see electric vehicle supply increase in Europe, this year significantly. I think we're going to see that trend continue to the point where plug-in hybrids will continue to actually lose market share, period. Plug-in share over the trailing quarter now stands at almost 28%, from 23.7% at this point in 2021. Electric vehicles are at 16% from 11.6%, but it's still early in the year, and generally electric vehicles do a lot better towards the last quarter of the year. So what are Germany's favorite electric vehicles? Well, after a quiet January, as is, as is expected for Tesla, because they import or export their vehicles from their US factory and their Chinese factory in January, and they usually those vehicles land in February or March. That meant that the Model 3 and Model Y took the top two spots. The Model Y hit record monthly volumes ahead of local Gigafactory output. It's gonna be really fascinating to see, isn't it, what the numbers are like once the factory opens in Berlin, I think we're gonna see that possibly the Model Y could become the best-selling car in Germany, period, regardless of vehicle type, within the next six months. So Germany's best-selling electric vehicles in February of 2022 were Tesla Model 3 with 3,700, Tesla Model Y, 2,254, Fiat 500e, 1,392, Hyundai Kona, 1,312, the Renault Zoe, 1,100, Volkswagen ID4 with 1,000, ID3 with 1,000 as well, the i3 with 970, the Hyundai Ionic 5 with 950, the Smart for 2 921, Mercedes EQA 913, Mini Cooper 855, Skoda Enyaq 822, Volkswagen Up 746, Opel Corsa 702, the Renault Twingo 667, the Audi Q4 e-tron, 647, Audi e-tron, 615, Opel Mokka, 587, and lastly, Mercedes EQC with 576. Just outside that list, the Mercedes EQB, which is new, is starting to deliver in decent volumes with 541 deliveries in February. The Renault Megane also delivered a handful of units for the first time in February. I'm guessing those vehicles haven't actually been sold. They might have been for testing and for just being shown in showrooms, because as far as I know, people haven't actually received any yet. But if I'm wrong and you've received one, let me know in the comment section below. So what are Germany's best-selling electric vehicles for the past quarter? In other words, for the trailing four months. So that means for 
November, December, January, and February. They are Tesla Model 3 in first place with 10,000 deliveries. Second is a Volkswagen Up with 6,950 deliveries. Good car, but pretty expensive. So I'm surprised at how well that vehicle is doing. Renault Zoe with 6,500 deliveries, the Fiat 500e, next with 4,345. Then the BMW i3 with 3,622, followed by the Hyundai Kona with 3,488. Next, Volkswagen ID3 with 3,457, followed by the Renault Twingo with 3,411. Now, you're probably wondering, why is the Tesla Model Y so low here? Or actually 14 with 2,962 deliveries. And the reason, the key reason is because it's only just started being delivered over the last few months. Now, in terms of manufacturing group performance in Germany over the trailing quarter of the last four months, Volkswagen has dominated with 24.6% of the German electric vehicle market well ahead of any rivals. Second place is Renault-Nissan with 14.5%, just ahead of Stellantis also with 14.5%, and Tesla is, sits in number four position with 13.4%. But I think there's a pretty good chance Tesla will jump up to second place when their gigafactory in Berlin opens and they start to mass produce Tesla model wise for the local marketplace. Mercedes sits back in fifth with 10%. Hyundai has 9.6%, BMW Group, takes 8.8% and Toyota is nowhere to be found. They're still dreaming of a hydrogen future, say Clean Technica. And I, love, I love that joke. They're, yeah, they are. It's true. They just released a hydrogen engine they've been working on, not a hydrogen fuel cell, a hydrogen engine they've been working on. And apparently that's going to be a big hit with um, all those people that drive, you know, have access to all those hydrogen fueling stations all around the world. Yeah, no. There's very few people don't have access to them. That's the key problem, yeah. Anyway, what's the outlook for Germany? Well, the past two months have been disappointing in Germany with combined plugins only growing share by a relative 10% versus last year. However, plug-in hybrids are declining significantly while battery electric vehicles are growing significantly. Furthermore, the German market is still in a hangover from the end of year emissions compliance rush in December, so we can't read too much into these results. And let's be honest, frankly, the results just basically dictate the manufacturing capabilities of Legacy Auto and Tesla, because right now, Germany is not really getting electric vehicles from China, very few anyway, coming from Tesla, some of them, and there's a couple of others coming from companies such as Volvo. But really, that hasn't, the, the Chinese onslaught hasn't happened in Germany yet aside from that. So the key issue we're facing here is not a matter of demand. There's months and months of pent up demand in Germany right now. It's a matter of supply. A legacy order right now and just not supplying enough electric vehicles to the German market. And that's where the bottleneck is being created. Now, obviously by the end of Q2, Tesla's factory in Berlin will be producing a lot of vehicles. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how that changes these numbers. In addition, Tesla ramping up their sales obviously will put pressure on legacy automakers. Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, all those car companies are going to be under a lot of pressure to ramp up production of EVs, even if they are making a loss on them, which is what I think they are at the moment. Now, Clean Technica says that in around 12 to 18 months from now, the majority of passenger vehicles sold in Germany at a price over 50,000 euros will be electric. And that makes sense because honestly, if you're buying an electric vehicle and it's powered by gasoline, it's not luxury, sorry. Sorry to let you know that, but this is just the reality. It's like saying, I bought a Blackberry. Isn't it a cool phone? No, it's old. Sorry, buddy. It's not new. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's old technology. Now, this is gonna have knock-on effects in the mid price, the 30,000 euro to 50,000 euro price range, and in turn, eventually affordable price segments. It's not gonna be long before the energy density and battery significantly increases, we're seeing all those improvements, and that's gonna bring down the price of electric cars. They're gonna be on par with gas vehicles in Europe by 2025. Not very far away, only about three years time. Now, what do you think about the European car market in terms of their adoption of electric vehicles? Do you think Tesla could take the first place in say six months from now when their factory in Berlin is wrapping up? Or do you think Volkswagen's aggressive push into electric cars will pay dividends this year? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, one thing I have to say is that the increase in oil prices, I believe is gonna push more and more people into wanting EVs. The reality is though, 
Can legacy auto make enough EVs to satisfy that demand? The answer is obviously no. So the question is not a matter of demand, it's a matter of supply. So whoever can supply those EVs, I believe will take the market this year. Now, interestingly, Mazda said this in response to Maximilian Holland's article in Clean Technica with this information that I've shared with you today. He said, even if the supply of EVs isn't there, the percentage of rise in EVs will still be enormous due to the Osborne effect, as people will fear buying new ICE vehicles now. Like in Norway, right? In Norway, the resale value on ICE vehicles collapsed when people just started moving en masse to EVs. He goes on, high oil prices couldn't have come at a worse time for internal combustion engine vehicle sales. Really bringing it home to people that it is this total cost of ownership, the TCO, that really matters, not just the initial purchase price. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.